Welcome to H2K Infosys. H2K Infosys is a e-verify business based in Atlanta, Georgia, United States. We provide 100% job-oriented, instructor-led, face-to-face, true live online software training programs. It also includes access to Cloud Test Lab with software tools. We provide live project for you to work on. We also provide assistance with mock interviews, resume preparation and review, and job placement assistance. H2K Infosys is trusted by so many students across the world. H2K Infosys provides world-class services in IT training with real-time project work for corporates and individuals, special IT training for MS students in the United States, software design development, QA manual and automation, performance testing and maintenance, IT staff augmentation, job placement assistance and tech support. testing we have so many steps after the testing again we have so many steps before execution we have to do the preparation wherein we spend so much of time you know preparing test data test case right we spend so much of time there preparing the test plan and after the execution means the actual testing is done we should do the defect reporting and then again the documentation starts so if you look at you know like five phases in the testing process only one phase is execution over there all the remaining phases are either preparation or the follow up okay so only one phase is like effective testing that you are doing the remaining are just what preparation and the follow ups that you are doing you are doing only documentation there right now when it comes to the small companies okay they are first of all you know so poor okay poor in the sense i mean um not able to like meet um, the standards like the bigger companies okay and when we ask them to you know spend lot of time in this preparation and then the follow ups they really don't feel good they do not want to invest the money over there they want to you know um, have more margin i mean proper margin so they want to reduce these documentation activities and when we follow ask them to follow the standard it really becomes difficult i mean from their part they are right but they have lot of negative perceptions regarding this standard okay they feel that okay they are wasting the time and you know they are spending their budget on the documentation and all but overall if you see the medium and larger companies it's going to be useful next next thing is what is this iso and iec very small enterprises okay vinita vsc is nothing but very small enterprises okay okay so now you understood what is the standard and why it is important now let's see what are the possible standards that are available who has defined these standards and what are those standards we have one standard that is defined as iso and iec let's try to understand that what is iso or iec ISO is the international organization of the standards and this is world's largest developer of the international standards and it has the institutes about 162 member countries so in 162 countries we are going to follow the same techniques for this testing process this is what it means okay so ISO has a network of how many countries 162 countries and this is the largest developer of the international standards now how are they going to you know gather all these countries and how are they going to make them work on these standards and how are they going to first of all create the standards who is going to create it here let's see that okay so iso standards are developed by the technical committees which comprise of the experts from the industry technical and then the business sector and it can be also joined by the representatives of the government agencies consumer association academic circles and then um, experts are going to i mean all these experts are going to participate in the international level conferences wherein they are going to discuss the different issues of their companies and the countries 
and they will try to arrive at a common solution. Okay, all these people are going to meet from the different countries in a common place and they will be discussing the issues and the solutions and they will arrive at a best solution. Now let's say there is a problem, okay. If I try to solve my problem on my own, maybe I have a limited vision over there. Okay, if I discuss my problem with a friend, she might suggest me something more. Okay, if we have a group wherein we can have a discussion and where the problem is put in, people will be looking the same problem from the different perspectives. Maybe we have the people over there who have already found the solution for that problem, which is already tried out. So we will be getting many solutions from the different people. We have something to make a choice there, right? And we will try to able to adapt the best one over there, right? So that is why all the people are meeting at a common place and they will be discussing and then they will arrive at a common solution, okay? And whatever the solution they arrive, that will be set up as a standard and it will be documented and it will be, you know, circulated as a, draft international standard means it is a draft okay it is not yet finalized and then the ISO member bodies will be voting it voting for it in the favor and if it gets the maximum number of votes then it will be finalized and it will be circulated to all the members of the ISO okay we call it as a final draft international standard so this is how the standards are being created. If you want to see these standards, they are available here www.iso.org. If you visit this site, you will get lot of such standards. And standards are not just limited to your testing process. They are um, across the industry. I mean, um, okay. So they are not just, you know, limited to your testing process. They are, you know, like all the different software development uh, processes like the design process and then how the management should be done, how the test planning has to be done, how the project planning has to be done, how the development is to be done, okay? So all the processes of the software development are included in this standard, okay? Is this topic boring? No? Okay. Okay then, yeah. I mean, when I take up this topic, you know, I feel a little bit concerned because it is theoretical, right? So, then your interest should not uh, come down. Okay, Jofi, thank you. Then, so let's understand what is this. Um, okay, what are the different standards that are available for us? Okay, so there are large, you know, collection of the standards. Because these are not the standards like, you know, I set it up. Okay, I set it a standard at once, okay, maybe some 20 years back I uh, set up a standard and it's not that I'm going to follow it for, you know, entire my life, no. The standards can be revised, okay, as per the market, uh, uh, you know, trend, we can revise these standards. It's not that, you know, like it has been developed some 20 years back or 50 years back and we are following the same things, the same techniques again, no. Based on the technology changes that are happening, environmental changes that are happening, right? And uh, based on the market trend, we should be able to revise these standards, modify the standards, okay? For example, we have um, ISO 9126, 20926, 26513. These are how the different documents of the standards that are identified means they will be given some code numbers so that we can easily identify them, okay? For example, 9126 is the evaluation of the software quality. Then 20926 is for functional size measurement method. Then 26513 is for the testers and the reviewers of the user documentation. So the different um, standards will be having the different coding format which they will be using, okay? Now, it's not necessary that you got to, you know, remember all these. Um, no, Vanita, these are not random. They have some coding process, which we are not really aware of, but they have some, you know, process over there using which they are going to um, 
do this coding process okay but you need not remember all these things because there are hundreds of documents that are available okay now it's not possible for you to you know go through all the documents and remember so here and as a tester okay you need not concentrate much on this because knowingly or unknowingly you will be made to follow the standards means your team lead okay he will be implementing the standards now whether you like it or not you know it or not he will make you implement that for example okay we prepared the test case document does anyone know that it was as per the standard yes it was as per the standard i shared the test plan document with you okay did anyone come to know that it was as per the standard so as a tester whether you know it or not as a team lead i should make you follow the standard okay because the entire controlling process is with me the team lead or let's say the project manager they make sure that we follow the standards in the team okay means the format or you know the test case document that i'm going to circulate within the team okay i make sure that it is as per the standard and as a tester okay what you do okay you take that document blindly okay you think that our team lead has given it we got to follow the format and you follow it right that is what happens i mean knowingly or unknowingly you will be following the standards and your team lead and your project manager all these people will make you follow the standards okay whether you know it or not and these documentations okay will be like available for you within the project team okay when you go to your projects these documents will be available to you especially if you are at the team lead position definitely these documents will be made available to you so that you can go through them and you can make the follow up okay okay i have some of them i can show you but not implement them okay yes it is a type of audit is uh, archana it is the evaluation that we conduct have you heard about the financial audits all the financial documents of the company will be checked okay whether the organization is maintaining the documentations properly or not regarding the financial statements right so similarly we have the audits here conducted in this it also wherein we evaluate whether all the projects are following the standards they are maintaining the documents they are carrying out the processes and activities as they are required to so that is called as audit evaluation okay evaluation of the activities and the documents then we have some of them i would like to name over here see what you do is the best thing you need not go through all the documents in detail you visit this site www.iso.org okay randomly browse through the documents you can check there particularly for the software testing or the qa over there right go through that and at least if you are able to see the preview and the content okay you will know okay these are you know implemented as per the standards okay divya has a question so does a ba decide what are the required standards no divya see the standards are already there okay and we are to follow them so it is a project manager who will be deciding which iso standards to be followed and this iso it is not going to you know blindly give you the certification i mean your company the certification before they give the certification for your company they come to your company and they evaluate whether you are following the standardizations or not and then only they are going to certify you okay it's not that you know i claim myself that i'm you know following the iso standards no you should take a membership you should get certified with that iso i mean the organization their team is going to visit to your company they randomly pick the projects and they try to do the audit okay like it could be 6 months sometimes 1 year or 3 years okay they visit your company they randomly pick the projects and then they do the audits on those projects okay and there will be several internal audits also uh, that will be conducted before these people uh, even the company has to conduct certain internal audits to check whether all the projects are following the standards or not okay and in case you are not following the standards the iso is going to reject your membership or you know so many of our students have given testimonials on how our training programs are you will find them on kudzu.com and on our website h2kinfosys.com 
on our website h2kinfosys.com you will also find more detailed information on who we are the courses that we offer what each course covers also if you're interested in a demo program please register on our home page on the left hand side just give us more information about yourself and we will send you a link for a demo class the demo class is absolutely free experience our commitment by just attending an orientation workshop at no cost our team of faculty and advisors are here to guide you with the right information if you still have more questions please feel free to call us call us at 770 Seven 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 one two six nine. This is a United States number. If you're calling from the UK, call us at zero two zero three three seven one seven six one five. You can also email us at training at h two k infosys dot com or h two k infosys at gmail dot com. Thank you for watching our videos. We wish you a great career in information technology.